Hi everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's our pleasure to meet you again at MA3051. I'm Edi Tribaskoro from FMIPA ITB. This section is about blocks in a graph. Enjoy listening. Let's start with the definition. A block in a graph is a maximal connected subgraph whose no cut vertices. So here we have three keywords. One is maximal, must be maximal, and then connected, and has no cut vertices. Yeah. And so every block with at least three vertices will be two connected. Not only connected, but two connected. So that means by removing one vertex, the subgraph still connected. Yeah. Every graph now can be considered as a union of blocks. Yeah. Of edge blocks. For examples, let's consider the left side diagram. Yeah. We have a graph G and the blocks of the graph G shown in the right diagram. Yeah. So this is the first block. Yeah. And we have this is another block. Yeah. And we have a block as a K2. We have a four blocks. And then we have uh, this is the biggest block in the graph G. Now two paths in a graph are internally disjoint if they do not have any internal vertex in common. Yeah. And we have the following theorem. This is a very important and famous theorem by Whitney in 1932. A graph G with at least three vertices is a two connected if and only if any two vertices of G are connected at least with two internally disjoint paths. So this is the illustration. Yeah? So this theorem characterizes graph G with this two connected. Yeah? Okay, let's see the proof. We prove from right to left. If any two vertices of G are connected by at least two internally disjoint pairs, then clearly G is two connected. Yeah, because whenever you remove a single vertex, then this graph remains connected. Yeah, but whenever you remove two vertices, yeah, one in the first uh, path joining between u and v, yeah, and then the other one, yeah, you remove another vertex, yeah, in the second path from u to v, then we will disconnect the graph, yeah, because u and v is no longer connected. So it's clear that G must be too connected. Now we are going to show you from left to right. We prove by induction on the distance of X and Y. Yeah? Let G be too connected. Then if the distance between X and Y is 1, then we have an edge, it's Y. And because G is too connected, then an edge XY is not cut edge. Yeah? So an edge XY is in a cycle. That means 
the vertices x and y are in the two internally disjoint uh, paths. Yeah, the first path is this one, the blue one, and then the second path is this one. Now assume it holds for all x and y with distances less than k. And now consider if the distance between x and y is k. Yeah? And consider a path of connecting x and y of length k. Yeah? For example, this is the path of length k connecting x and y. And let z be the vertex in this path before y. Yeah? Then, according to induction hypothesis, we have two internally disjoint paths from x to z because the distance between x to z is less than k. Yeah? So, if you remove now z from g, then the graph remains connected, right? Because g is too connected. So, assume that that graph, by after removing z from the g, containing a path from x to y, yeah, and we call it this path is p prime, yeah. So suppose we have this path, yeah, after removing z from g, yeah. So, and then if s is the last vertex of p prime, which is in a union of p and uh, q, then there are two internally disjoint paths from x to y now. Which one? Okay, I'll show you. So the first one will be, this is the path from x to y. So we follow uh, the blue one here. This is the first path, and then this one, the second path. So it's proof that if G is too connected, then there are at least two internally disjoint paths between any two vertices and G. Now we have the following corollary 3.3. We have two statements here. First, any two vertices of A to connected graph G lie on a common cycle. Yeah. Why is that? Because if G is a two connected graph, then by theorem 3.2, we have for any two vertices, let's say, V1 and V2 and G, then we have at least two internally disjoint paths. For example, this is the path. Then these two paths will form a cycle containing V1 and V2. Yeah? And then we have the second statement. If G is a graph on an vertices whose no cut vertex, then any two edges of G will lie on a common cycle. Why is that? Because if G is a graph with uh, no cut vertex, then G must be too connected. Yeah? And then consider two edges, E1 and E2 and G, and then form a new graph we call it G prime here by subdividing these two edges. So we have this situation. Yeah. Then, because G is too connected, then G prime is also too connected. Uh, so by the first part, we will have these two vertices lie 
on a common cycle. So for example, this is a common cycle yeah, containing phi1 and phi2. So that means in G here, we will have that E1 and E2 will be laying on a common cycle. So it's proved this corollary. The theorem 3.2 has a generalization to k-connected graphs as known as Menger's theorem. The Menger's theorem is stated as follows. A graph G with an vertices is k-connected if and only if any two distinct vertices of G are connected by at least k internally disjoint path. Yeah? So this is the illustration of Menger's theorem. So if G is k-connected, then any two vertices x and y here will be connected by k internally disjoint path or vice versa. Okay, so this is the end of this section. Thank you very much for watching and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.